Welcome to this special edition of The Point with Ni Li Xin coming to you from Urumqi, capital of Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region in northwestern China. My special guest today is Ms. Ai Xiamu, spokesperson of the Standing Committee of the People's Congress of Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. Ms. Ai Xiamu, thank you for agreeing to our interview. Could you help us understand a regulation that was passed on the 5th of February about the uh, ethnic unity and progress here in Xinjiang? What's that all about? The fourth session of the 13th People's Congress of Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region adopted the regulation on the establishment of model areas for ethnic unity and progress in Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region on February 5, 2021, which has been in effect since March 1, 2021. That is to say, Xinjiang has been engaged in some very good practices regarding the development of ethnic unity. For example, first of all, we want to build a firm sense of the Chinese national community, and there is also a program to facilitate progress in Xinjiang through better cultural engagement. By creating this local regulation, we can incorporate the good practices and successful experiences in Xinjiang over the years into the legal framework. Why is it necessary? The reason is to support the sustained work in promoting ethnic unity and progress in Xinjiang in accordance with the law. The regulation makes it clear that all ethnic groups should exchange, interact, and engage with each other at all levels. There has to be a common language spoken by different ethnic groups and people despite their ethnicities. They should be able to clearly understand each other. Meanwhile, all people should tolerate each other, appreciate each other, work together, live in peace and seek harmonious development, so that all ethnic groups can stay together in unity and pursue common prosperity. Why is such a regulation so important, stressing unity and harmony? It's because Xinjiang is a multi-ethnic region. There are 16 ethnic groups such as Uyghur, Kazakh, Mongol, Dao, and Sip. Each ethnic group has its own culture and customs. They are all an integral part of the Chinese nation. There are laws in place to protect and pass on the traditional culture of ethnic minorities at the national level. For example, the state introduced the law of the People's Republic of China on the protection of cultural relics. Yes, there are. For example, apart from the law of the People's Republic of China on the protection of cultural relics, we're also following the intangible cultural heritage law of the People's Republic of China, both of which provide very good legal protection for the traditional culture of all ethnic groups in Xinjiang. Can you give an example? Famous sites such as the ancient city of Kashgar and the Jiaohe ruins in Turban are all protected. And many heritages have been further developed and passed on. I also mentioned the Uyghur Mukam, the Kyrgyz epic of Manas, and the Uyghur Meshrep, all of which are on the UNESCO representative list of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity. So what about traditional customs and traditions of uh, ethnic minorities? Do they have um, their rights to exercise, to practice these customs? There are no restrictions. Why am I so sure? On the one hand, it's guaranteed by law. 
For example, the Constitution of the People's Republic of China and the Law of the People's Republic of China on Regional Ethnic Autonomy clearly stipulate that all ethnic groups have the freedom to preserve or reform their customs and traditions. Xinjiang fully respects the customs and traditions of all ethnic minorities. There are many customs and traditions in the areas of food, festivals, wedding, and funeral rituals. For example, in Xinjiang, we celebrate several festivals, including the Spring Festival, Qingming Festival, Dragon Boat Festival, Mid Autumn Festival, Nauru's Festival, and Gurban Festival. And on these festivals, we have public holidays for all ethnic groups in Xinjiang. We also celebrate these festivals with music, dance, and sports. So how do you look at the two acts that the United States passed over? One is about human rights, the other is about forced labor. I think the two acts on human rights constitute a reckless smear and unfounded accusations of the counterterrorism and de-radicalization measures, as well as the human rights situation in Xinjiang. I don't think their argument is justified at all. When it comes to human rights, we treat all ethnic groups equally in Xinjiang. We also follow the UN's global counterterrorism strategy and its action plan to prevent and control violent extremism. All the work we have done is visible to everyone and has been effective in stopping terrorist acts. Is there a difference between their concept of human rights and your understanding of human rights? What they say about human rights and what we understand by human rights are completely different. People's human rights, let's say the right to live, the right to health, the right to development, are fully protected in Xinjiang. The reason is that people's right to life can only be guaranteed when there is peace in the country and the safety of people's lives and property can be ensured. When it comes to the right to health, in Xinjiang, we're now providing free health checkups for all people. More than 20 million people of all ethnic groups in Xinjiang can undergo free health checkups every year. After the health check, we can detect, diagnose, and treat them early and truly safeguard the right to health for all ethnic groups. I think it's also complete nonsense. There's no such thing as forced labor here. We're in strict compliance with the constitution of the International Labor Organization as well as relevant conventions. There's also a strong legal system in China to protect labor rights. For example, in order to implement the labor law of the People's Republic of China, Xinjiang has issued the opinions on the implementation of the labor law of the People's Republic of China and the regulations on the implementation of labor security supervision. All of these laws and regulations can offer full protection to labor rights of people in all ethnic groups. Workers of all ethnicities can sign labor contracts with companies according to the principle of voluntariness and negotiation. Companies must provide employees with insurance and pension schemes for them to come to work. Mm. 
I think Adrian Zenz is a radical anti-China German activist who has thrown out a series of anti-China rumors to slander China, and he makes a living out of it. That's why he fabricated the so-called research report. The report, as we all know, is completely untrue. It conjures something out of nothing, and it is a deliberate attempt to undermine the stability and development of Xinjiang. It also hurts the feelings of the people of all ethnic groups in Xinjiang. Recently, you see some companies and people in Xinjiang filed a civil lawsuit against him at a local court. Adrian Zenz owes us an apology. What if he refuses? If he refuses to apologize, we'll press ahead with the case. Until he apologizes to us, restores our reputation, and pays for the damages. I think China is now a country under the rule of law. Any criminal who breaks the law should be sanctioned by the law and should be held legally accountable. Thank you very much. I was talking to Ms. Ai Xiamu, spokesperson of the Standing Committee of the People's Congress of the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region.